Welcome to this webinar. Uh, my name is Nicola Sly and I'm the General Manager of Runway Ballarat. And um, I'm here today with Linda Wong, who is Runway's Chief Entrepreneur. Uh, Linda is speaking to us today after years of experience in the corporate world, but also um, running her, having run her own businesses, she has a wealth of knowledge behind her. Um, Linda is also in charge of all of the business programs that we run here at um, runway as well so and we felt that given we're the connector of business and our small business ourselves we are personally seeing the impact that COVID-19 is having on our community uh, so we would like today to bring you some of our own experiences and those of the people within our community uh, to talk to you about de-risking the impact to your business the lens we would like to have is one of a much more pragmatic view so that you can take away some I guess, um, actions that you can carry out at, in your own business. Uh, we've broken it down into three key areas. The first one being logistics and communication. The second being planning. And the last one, believe it or not, is about opportunity. So Linda, let's start with logistics and communications. Sure. Uh, what do you think the most important thing is that we have to be concerned about here? Well, when I think about businesses and really the key asset that all businesses have, it's really around people. Um, and when I say that, you know, so during, during this crisis, we need to make sure that our people are taken care of. Um, and when I say taken care of, there are three key areas that I think we should focus on. One is around providing them with reassurance. The other is about their health and the third risk management in relation to the OHNS aspects at the moment. So when I say it, when I talk about reassurance, um, I am really thinking here that communication is king. Um, there are many different ways in which we can ensure we have solid communication, but this would be the time to ensure that we as businesses really have our technology up to date. Um, and what I mean by that is that if you're not already using some form of online messaging tool, um, make sure you invest in one now. Some examples out there that are quite popular is Microsoft Teams. Um, there's also, you know, your sort of Facebook posting in terms of Messenger. Um, can't forget Zoom for video conferencing. Skype. And also Skype itself, absolutely. Yeah. Um, and just also our phones. We've still, every, almost everybody has smartphones these days. So we need to make sure that we continue to use the texting facility and, mm -hmm. you know, the old sort of old thing. Pick, of, up, the phone. pick up the phone and dial someone. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Um, and really, I guess at the end of the day, what that communication does, it provides certainty to our staff um, during these times. And we want to make sure that, um, you know, we really are consistent in the messaging that we give them and regular about um, giving out that communication as well. So the, we'd also have an audit trail as well, wouldn't we, if we were using a messaging um, service like those? Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. So, so in, in Microsoft Teams and even in Skype, you have the ability to have that audit trail of, um, you know, the communication between the staff members and, and the group itself. So absolutely, there'd be a good audit trail. So everyone will be up to date in what the latest decision making was. Yep. yep. Absolutely. Very important during this time. Very yep. Um, so it's important for people to know what's happening, because at the end of the day, um, as you as you know, the, the um, COVID-19 the information is changing every day, changing. providing the updates and making sure that, you know, we can provide that information. You know, we don't actually have all the information. And so it's important to actually allow our people know that whilst we don't have all the information, we're there to listen to them and we're there to provide them again, the reassurance that we're working it in a very pragmatic manner. So again, in these times, um, as leaders, we need to be sure that we are actively listening to our people, um, making sure that we are hearing their concerns and working with them to problem solve how we actually move forward. Um, the other parts around the uh, logistics and communications is really making sure that our people have access to work if we have to go into a lockdown mode. So at the moment, um, you know, there are a number of organizations who are moving their workforce to be able to work from home. 
And if you're a business that isn't, um, you know, in a, in a, you're not actually ones that have actually worked from home previously, then there are quite a few logistical things that you need to sort of keep in mind. So one of them I mentioned already, which is about the, the communication tools. So something like a, a messenger tool. The other thing is also making sure that not everybody has access to internet at home. So probably the first question we would need to ask is, have they actually got access to internet? Um, because that, that um, would not enable them to, to work from home and to provide them some means of being able to do that. Um, the other thing is around just the physical computer itself. Um, you know, there are a lot of people who still work on a desktop, don't have access to a laptop or a device. So again, it's enabling them to have access to that. Um, and then also making sure that um, from home, they will be able to access the internet and have access to a computer to be able to do all those things that they need to have the right tools and have the right tools. Yep. Yeah. Um, the other area which we mentioned earlier, which is about the health. So the health of our people. Um, so if you haven't already done so, um, I would highly recommend that you draft a policy and procedure around the COVID-19 um, issue that we've got at the moment in terms of how you would address certain things. And so some key things to have in mind around what you would put into that policy procedure is around things um, about leave. So what, what entitlements do staff have in terms of leave relating to COVID-19? making sure there is a clear process in place for how people report if they're not feeling well and, and making sure you have a register for how keeping track of that and reporting on it. Make sure you've got very clear policies around um, traveling. So, you know, traveling and not traveling at this stage. Um, and also if you don't already have a policy around working remotely, making sure that that's all incorporated within this new policy and procedure. What sort of logistical things should we be considering as part of that policy? Um, so we need to make sure that, um, you know, in terms of securing the site, so if we do go into a lockdown mode, understanding who has keys, who's got access, passes, making sure that phone numbers are, you know, in terms of who has um, the, the resource phone numbers and stuff too, yeah. that's going to be a very important thing as well. Okay. So um, where should everyone go for official advice? Yes, yeah, so to, I guess from an OHS perspective, um, which is probably the last item that we want to sort of touch on within the logistics and communication. There is, you know, a lot of misinformation out there at the moment. We want to make sure that, you know, we are always going to the source of truth for what's happening within COVID-19. So we do recommend that you would refer to the Department of Health and Human Resources, sort, um, Health Department of Health, for all of the up-to-date information because it is changing so rapidly. Um, make sure that you access the tools on there in terms of printing off the relevant posters, um, being able to make them look um, visible in terms of your, your work site as well, um, particularly around the hygiene of um, the health and safety side of things. It's useful to have that reminder. Absolutely. Yep. Uh, the second area we would like to explore today is around planning. And one of the challenges with working remotely, especially if you don't already have a culture of working remotely, is being confident that your people have enough work to do and are working on relevant tasks. What sort of advice can you give around that, Linda? Yeah, I think um, at this stage, you know, this is actually a really good time to readjust your plan because um, reality is, if you have a plan in place for the financial year and maybe for the three years, it's probably not going to be relevant right now with the COVID-19 in place at the moment. So now is the time to revisit your plan, develop a new plan, um, really look at you know, what you've actually put down in terms of what your objectives were, making sure that you realign them in terms of your priorities, and then being very clear about articulating, again, linking it back to the communication to your people, because again, it provides reassurance that you've gone through the plan, you're really clear about the priorities, and then, um, I guess, making sure that you're putting all mitigation to ensure that your people will continue after coming out of the other end from this crisis, really. So the next one mm -hmm. is conducting meetings online. We'll yep. all be doing that more. Absolutely. And what are the rules? Yeah. <laughs> so um, online meetings is very different to face-to-face -face meetings. Um, you know, in terms of the etiquette for online meetings, there's probably a few things to sort of keep in mind. Um, I always go to, you know, if nothing else, make sure you've got 
headsets when you're having online mm -hmm. meetings because without headsets, the background noise can be very distracting and it just doesn't provide a very good user experience in terms of that online meeting. So that's probably the first thing, you know, whether or not they're just the headsets you have with your phone mm -hmm. um, or you can get some pretty high tech headsets now that really block out all of that background noise. The other one is really making sure that you're very clear at the beginning of the meeting to state who's hosting it and also who's going to be taking the notes. So be very clear again, um, you would normally do that in a face to face, but even more important in an online meeting. And the third one really is to make sure you have those pauses in the online meetings um, for a couple of reasons. One is around perhaps there might be some challenges with the internet bandwidth and the buffering. And also when you are having the online meetings, there is always sort of that lag in terms of who's speaking. And when you don't allow those pauses, it just sounds like everybody is talking at the same time. Mm -hmm. So it's really allowing everybody to have a voice during that online meeting. Okay. Um, one last point, which you had pointed out before was about being cognizant of the situation that we find ourselves in. Yep. Um, would you like to elaborate on that? Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, we are really entering a very different territory in terms of um, the what's happening in, in the environment. And so for those who don't normally work from home and we have to move to a uh, remote working workforce, um, we need to be cognizant of the fact that um, many people will have distractions in their home. So whether or not they're kids or, you know, just other people filtering around in the background, that that's just going to be a fact of life. And we just need to keep that in mind mm -hmm. from a reality set. Yeah. Yeah. So we, we don't want to be focused on all the negatives because obviously there are a lot of negatives in the world right now. And and we're all dealing with a different, I guess, selection of those um, challenges. Mm. So it may sound strange, um, given that we find ourselves in such a surreal world at the moment, but there are opportunities with that, within that, aren't there? What's your take on that? Well, I think so. You know, I guess from, from my perspective, with any challenge, there does tend to be an opportunity that's introduced. And at this point, we do need to make sure that we are thinking about those opportunities. And there's simple things like just, you know, if you think about all of the things that we say at Runway, you know, oh, if only we had more time, you know, if only we had more time to finish that, or if only we had more time to, to do that. This is the time where we are gonna have probably more time mm -hmm. and we should go back and revisit all of those things that we just never got done. So that's probably the first point. The other thing is um, really in terms of um, taking a stock take of all of the inefficiencies that we may have in terms of running the business and revisiting how we can actually improve on those inefficiencies and the wastage, wastage in our business as well. Um, and the third one is just really about, um, I guess from, a, from an opportunistic perspective is looking at being pragmatic again and being able to make quick decisions. Because in order for us to actually really move forward with everything, we need to make quicker decisions. So um, we need to get um, leaders together to really look at all the facts, um, be able to digest those facts in a quickly and easily manner so that we can make those decisions quickly um, and then move forward from there. And when I say make those decisions quickly, I'm not saying days like they need to be hours mm. in which we actually close those out and and they're not always going to be the right decisions but decisions need to be made in order for us to actually plan and move forward and get things in place really yeah for the security of, of the future of the community yep sure thank you linda not a problem that was good <laughs> i hope that was helpful for everybody um watching this at, at whatever point that you do um but at any stage if you need support you need someone to talk to if you don't know who to connect with. Uh, Runway is here and you are welcome. Uploaded along with this video. So um, all the best. Thank you. Thank you.